Hi guys, welcome back. We're going to talk about the temporal bone in this video. So here we go. Let's get right to it. This is a little more complex. So uh, it has a few basic parts. The major part that we can see here is the squamous. It's the squamous portion of the temporal bone. Now there's also a projection we're probably familiar with. Uh, this is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone which actually arises from the squamous bone still, as we'll see in a minute. But there is a margin, or there is a mountain range that extends off the back. I think the other side had it a little better. Let's spin this around. Yes, it does have it better here. So there's a, you can see a little mountain range coming back here. So about a centimeter underneath this, so in this region, uh, this is we have a name change. No longer sphe uh, sphenoid, or it's no longer squamous. Uh, it is mastoid. So all of this is the mastoid portion. This is actually the mastoid process here, and we'll talk a little bit more in a minute when I flip the skull over. Um, you can also see the kind of the ear hole here. That's called the what's that called? External acoustic meatus, or external auditory meatus, whatever you prefer. And that is actually created, created by this ring of bone here. And this ring or column of bone uh, is called the tympanic portion of the temporal bone. Tympanic portion of the temporal bone. Okay, let's hit some sutures before we flip it over. This is a very common, I'm sure you know the name of this suture, uh, between the parietal bone here and the squamous part of the temporal bone. That's called the squamous suture. Uh, an author I really like uh, called Singh actually calls it the parietal squamous suture and I actually like that name better and why because we get a name change down here okay when we hit this mastoid region uh, this part of the suture is called the parietal mastoid suture so that's why I like that name and Gray's everybody uses that but most authors just call this the squamous suture but I like parietal squamous suture better Okay, uh, in the front, now that we went through most of these bones, uh, we have another uh, articulation here, another suture. It's just a little one. What's this yellow bone here? That's the greater wing of the sphenoid. Actually, it's the temporal surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid. Uh, but this articulation here is called the sphenoparietal suture. I'll tell you why I said that in a minute. Uh, this, I think I, did I miss that last time? I might have missed that in the last one. This, of course, is the, right, that's the coronal suture. And this is the frontosphenal suture here, frontosphenal suture here. Uh, the squamous part of the temporal bone actually meets up here. So this is called the sphenosquamous suture here, sphenosquamous suture suture goes way down there okay now this is a special region right here um, it actually has a name for this region where the the frontal bone parietal bone temporal bone sphenoid bone all kind of come together uh, this is called the terion the terion uh, and it's a very thin spot in the skull and there's an important artery the anterior division of the uh, middle meningeal artery is under here and if you get hit right in this part of the skull with something, like maybe even a golf ball, um, you can develop a, you can rupture that artery and develop a subdural hematoma and actually die from that, from relatively minor trauma. The rest of the skull can handle uh, trauma pretty good, but not this region here. Okay, I think I got all those sutures. Uh, I think we talked about this before. This was again the, what was this called? This is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Whoops, sorry. Zygomatic process of the temporal bone. And this suture here is the zygomatico temporal suture. Zygomatic process of the temporal bone meets up with the zygomatic bone, more specific. That's the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. This would be the frontal process of the zygomatic bone, but we're getting off track. We're going to save that for the facial skeleton. So let's turn the skull over now, see what else we can see. 
Okay, let's start back here. You can see we have a really big notch right here. That's called the mastoid notch. Mastoid process is here. Now we can see the styloid process quite nicely. We can see the external occipital, or we can see the uh, external auditory meatus right here. Remember what kind of bone did I say was around that? What's all this? That's tympanic bone. Tympanic is a column of bone. This is all tympanic bone. In fact, it goes all the way around to the back. It keeps going down here underneath the styloid, and it stops right here. Okay, so this little column of bone also gives rise to this structure. It's a good test question. Styloid process we know, but styloid process arises from what bone? You would say the tympanic part of the temporal bone. Okay. Now this is a very important structure. I don't know how good this is going to come out. Now that's not a fossa. That's a hole for the for the where the mandible connects. But this isn't this depression is called the mandibular fossa. Okay, that's important. That makes up part of the TMJ joint, which we're going to study in sixth quarter. So the back border of the uh, of this fossa, what kind of bone is that? Good. That's tympanic bone. It's the temp this is all tympanic part of the temporal bone, which makes up the back part of the mandibular fossa. Now there's a ridge. Comes all the way from here, extends all the way down. It's called the articular eminence, and that's also biomechanically important uh, for the temporal mandibular joint. After you open your mouth about 25 uh, millimeters or so, the head of the condyle has, actually has to jump over this ridge of bone. Sixth quarter, see, that's going to be so exciting, isn't it? Okay, uh, what was this suture right here? That's still sphenosquamous suture, sphenosquamous suture still. This is still squamous, this is all squamous part of the temporal bone. Okay. Now, let's drop this down, the camera down a little bit. Okay, now we have one more part of bone to talk about. And here it is here. There's the demarcation. It's a little, not square, more of a pyramidal shape. Uh, but this is the petreous part of the temporal bone, all of this. It's the hardest part of the temporal bone. And it's going to do some articulating. Uh, we have one Remember we talked about this already, where it articulates with the basilar process? Remember we said that's not a true suture? That's a what? It's a synchondrosis. So this is called the petrio-occipital synchondrosis. Petrio for petreous part, petrio or petro-occipital synchondrosis. And uh, posteriorly, this synchondrosis ends right here. What was this called? It's the jugular foramen. And then anteriorly, it ends right here in this hole. That's foramen lucerum, or lacerum, however you want to say it, lacerum. And that's, is that a true foramen in a living human? No, it has a plug of fibrous bone there. Now, we have one more articulation here petrous portion articulating with the sphenoid bone. So this is called the sphenopetrosal. No, it's not a suture. It's a synchondrosis. Synchondrosis. So all of this right here as well. Sphenopetrosal synchondrosis. And that's where you get the width growth. The skull grows in width in this region here. Okay, I think I got everything included. There's an important fissure right here. I will put the name above. And there's, let's see, there. I think that's about all we want to say. Oh, there's one, one little hole here. It's not made a hole, but this is really a hole there. At the base of the styloid process, I'll put the name of that above as well.